right, so I got another customer that came in. Uh, pretty much inspired me to do an off-grid mobile unit uh, in a different fashion. So uh, this is an RV. It's about 30 foot long. has two air conditioners. I told him we might be able to run the two air conditioners, but not for a long period of time. It's kind of a sketchy roof. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, so this is a 6.5 EG4 KW uh, with the 5.125 KW lithium iron phosphate battery setup. Uh, Life Power 4 uh, from Signature Solar. So we're taking the input and output from the solar and doing it like a normal uh, installation. I'll be having a junction box sitting here. Right now I have a couple holes piled out just kind of uh, giving me a runway through. Uh, so this setup will be set up. No, oh, sorry for the redundancy. As you can see, it's a pretty long uh, RV here. Uh, so underneath here is an I-beam going and stretching from point A to point B. We'll be running uh, Schedule 40 conduit, inch and a quarter, coming up with an elbow into a junction box underneath here, mounted right here. And that junction box will come in with some flex tube uh, coming into this circuit. Now, this is the normal input circuit that uh, most RVs have. Uh, this one is 120 volt or 240, uh, three pole, four uh, wire, depending, 60 hertz, standard systems. Uh, this one's amperage is uh, 50 amp supply max. We will not be supplying that. Our system roughly runs around 20 to 25, depending. So uh, the solar array is up top. Let me go ahead and, I'm also building another solar trailer here. It's gonna, this one's gonna house eight solar panels. This is my uh, mobile unit from a long time ago. Transport. Walk, 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 walk. Woo-wee! We up in the air now. All right, so the system on top, kind of torn. So they have a bunch of webs, as you can see, going from point to point to point as that rib structure. Uh, the customer was concerned about potential leaks and things of that nature. So I'm thinking I have some of this material that they use. Uh, forgot what it's called. Anyways, uh, it's the same type of uh, roof material for these RVs. And that's basically how they putty everything in. I don't know why it bonds the way it does, but it does not break that. So I'm probably going to run aluminum strips with that bonding on that so i'm not piercing through the roof and uh put the panels there so i got one two maybe three panels here hopefully on the other side i can get another three that'd be pretty cool so i'm thinking like 100 watt panels or something like that on two strips of one by one aluminum uh railing to kind of help with the contour and transition in case there is some kind of flex because you know that this is gonna be flex with this buildings uh, I don't want to pierce through the top, like I said. So, And then I could probably put one normal solar panel right there, or two of the same. And then, you know, maybe one sitting over there. It's going to be kind of funky. I'm going to keep it low. Uh, option two I wanted to do, and uh, test in this one, was the um, monocrystalline, like a rollout poly. It, it, it's not like a normal solar panel, right? It, it's the ones that roll out and they're on the eBay um, and uh, the flexible panels and, and crap like that. And so basically just mount that and glue that onto this top here, trying to get up at least 380 volts is what we're trying to shoot for, um, or at least four panels worth. So this guy can charge his battery in a day, you know, kind of keep it a one-to-one -one ratio. Anyways, I hope that kind of keeps you updated on what we're doing. Uh, but other than that, oh yeah. Long time ago, busted this sucker out. I got about like 40,000 miles on this damn trailer. Woo wee! Look at that. It's a good thing I know how to walk roofs. Yeah! All right, folks, I'll keep you guys updated for the uh, final install, but until then, God bless.